Yeah, I start the recording also. Yes, sir. Should, should we wait for a few more people or? Maybe Manami, we can start. Okay. Um, so it is my pleasure today to host today's session. And uh, today we have a speaker, Nicola Bellari, uh, who is going to talk about, um, so he's from University Claremont Urbania, and he's going to talk about introduction to the modular method. And the stage is for you, Nicola. Thank you, Manami, for, for the introduction. And, and thank you for the, to the organizers for inviting me to this nice, um, to this nice conference, online conference. So I will be talking today about the introduction to the modular method. So here's the, the table of contents of my talk. I will first give you some context and, and, and terminology and setup. Then I will discuss in detail the, the proof of Fermat's last year. Not, not all the details, of course, because it, it's a long, very long and complicated proof, but I will try to summarize the main steps in the proof. And then I will explain how we can extend these techniques to, to deal with other type of uh, to other to other equation of fermatite. So first the framework. So here's the setting. We fix three co prime non-zero integer capital A, B, and C. And we're going to be interested in in the following Diophantian problem. So we, we would like to find all the sextuples of integers x, y, and z, and p, q, and r, with the property that P, Q, and R are all greater than or equal to two, and X, Y, and Z satisfy the following equation, A times X to the P plus B times Y to the Q is equal to C times Z to the R. So, of course, this problem in its full generality is, is, is a widely open problem, but there have been many efforts by many mathematicians trying to solve part of this problem. And this has a long, very long history starting with the old Greeks. So, there is no way I can summarize the whole the history on, on these type of equations today. And I will only focus on, on, a, on a very specific part. And basically, I will focus on the end of the, the story. And for my talk, I will be focusing mostly on the case where the coefficients a, b, and c are all one, or all the exponents p, q, and r are equal. And maybe both, I will maybe make both assumptions when I will be talking about Fermat's theorem. Okay, so uh, a few more terminology again. So, so again, I'm, I'm considering these equation, a, x to the, a times x to the p plus b times y to the q equals c times z to the r. This is what I call the generalized Fermat equation. And sometimes I would just write for short GFE. So here's a definition which will be used throughout the talk. So we call a solution, just any triple x, y, and z of integers that satisfy this equation. And we shall say that this solution is primitive if the GCD of X, Y, and Z is one. And the triple of exponent P, Q, and R, I call it the signature. So when we, you try to solve this equation, the equation one on, on the slide, the problem is actually completely different if, if you are in one of these three situations. The first situation is when the sum of the inverse of the exponents, so one over P, plus one over Q plus one over R is greater than one, or when the sum of these inverse of the exponents is one, or when the, in the situation where the sum of the exponents is, great, is less than one. So, and today I will mostly focus again, I will, I will be talking only on the last situation when the sum of the inverse of the exponent is less than one. So what happens for a fixed signature? So the first signatures you, you might think of is the signature where all the exponents are the same, so p, p, p. So in that case, if, if you consider an integer p, which is greater than or equal to four, because you, you want this condition, then, then one over p plus one over p plus one over p is less than one. And you take an equation with coefficient a, b, and c like this. So this defines a smooth projective curve of genus p minus one times p minus two over two, which turns out to be greater than or equal to two if P is greater than or equal to four, right? So you can apply a model conjecture, which is a theorem by Falkins now. And it, it tells you that such an equation has only finitely many rational points. So that's, that's a finiteness result for, for these kind of equations. Of course, it's not effective. 
but you can also uh, using using file thickness results, but in, in a more so, in, in a much more subtle way, Damon and Granville they were able to extend these kind of results to any signatures, not only the the signatures PPP, but any signatures PQR, for which so all these exponents are greater than or equal to two, the sum of the inverse as, is less than one. So they proved that there exists only finitely many primitive solution to the generalized Fermat equation a x to the p plus b y to the q equals c times d to the r. That, that's for a fixed signature. You, you fix the signatures, you, you fix integers p, q, and r that satisfy this condition. And you, and you look at the, that specific equation and this is the, the best finiteness result that we have. Now, what happens when you want the, the signature to vary? So if you allow the exponents to vary, like, like in Fermat's last, last theorem that I will discuss later in more detail. So we can make some general expectations which are all conjectural, but, and, and the, the most efficient one is based on, on what, what is called the ABC conjectures. A, ABC conjectures is a, is a conjecture from Masser and Osterle from 1985. And it, it says the following. So fix an epsilon, which is greater than zero. Then it says that uh, for any non-zero co-prime integers A, B, and C, which, which satisfy that A plus B is equal to C, if you take the maximum of all the absolute values of A, B, and C, then it's bounded from above by some constant that depends on epsilon, but not on ABC, times the radical, the radical of ABC, raised to the one plus one. And the radical of in a, an integer here is just the product of all prime, the, sorry, the product of primes that divide n. Okay. So if you apply this conjecture, this ABC conjecture to, uh, to small a, kept, uh, yeah, little a, little b, and little c, which are given by capital A times X to the P plus capital B times Y to the Q and so on. So what you get is the following, is that you, you get that there are only finitely many triples, X, Y, and Z of corporate integers for which there exist integers, P, Q, and R, satisfying both of these conditions. First of all, the sum of the inverse of the exponents, one over P plus one over Q plus one over R is, greater, is less than one. And moreover, a times x to the p plus b times y to the q is equal to c times d to the r. So that's that's a, also a finiteness statement, but this time it, it's a conjectural statement, of course, because it depends on, on on the ABC conjecture. But that's for varying signatures, not for fixed signature. So we, we can go even further in the in the description of what are the solutions to this equation. And if you, if you stick to the case where A, B, and C are one, so all the coefficients are one, so you're, you're considering these equations, X to the P plus Y to the Q is equal to B to the R, then there's a very famous conjecture, but which seems completely unacceptable, which is called the fermat catalan conjecture that says that the only primitive solution in non-zero integer of this generalized Fermat equation, so here we allow, here we allow P, Q, and R to vary but we impose that they satisfy this condition that one over P plus one over Q plus one over R is less than one. Then they all corresponds to, um, they should all correspond is finitely many primitive solution to a solution of this, of, of the following identities, which I won't, which I won't uh, read, but you, you can see them on the slide. So you have small ones say, and, and, and other rather big, bigger solutions. Only 10 solutions possible. Sorry? Only 10 number of solutions possible. Yes, yes. Only a finite number of, of solutions. And, and you can also notice that in all of these solutions, all of these equations, you always have an exponent, which is two. And this led, this led Tideman and, and Zagier to actually uh, conjecture that whenever you have a, a non-trivial, a, a primitive solution, sorry, to this equation in non-zero integers, then one of the exponents has to be two. And I think that that's the, the statement of the Bill Price conjecture, which is awarded a million dollar. <laughs> so feel free to, to prove it. 
And so, anyways, that, that's a, a very conjectural, I mean, it's conjectural and very difficult statement for sure. So we're not gonna, we're not going to try to prove this, this Fermat-Catalan conjecture or the Bill Price conjecture. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss a, a very important notion. Which I, is I also notion. observed, sorry, I also observed yeah. that all the exponents have prime factors only, only two, three, five, and seven. Sorry, say it again. I, I didn't hear what you said. So the, the only prime factors of the exponents appearing in these 10 solutions are 2, 3, 5, and 7. 2, 3, and 7. Um, 2, 3. Yes, there aren't so many. Yes, there aren't some. So yeah, there's, but only, I, there's only two in, in the set of exponents. Uh, not necessarily three. Not necessarily three, but because you have these kind of solutions here. But yeah, I mean, everything is explicit should should be the whole list, but no, no one knows how to put that, of course. So yeah, so so now I'm going to discuss what what is called the the trivial solutions, and you you will see that the name is not that. That accurate actually because trivial solutions are, are really a really a problem, but we'll discuss that later. So, so first, first of all, some 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 terminology which is which is going to be used. So when we try to solve some generalized Fermat equation and we want the the signatures to vary, we we're gonna we're gonna take the notation p for the varying exponent and r for those that are fixed. So for instance, we, we might be interested in solving generalized Fermat equation of signatures RRP. And implicitly when I say RRP, I'm thinking about an exponent R which is fixed and the P which is varying, okay? But okay, that's that's just uh, some by, by, by definition, if you want. So now if you apply the ABC conjecture and to, to these, solution to, to this generalized Fermat equation, here's what you get. What you get is that if X, Y, and Z is a primitive solution to a generalized Fermat equation in non-zero integers, then at least for large enough primes, P, you get that the product of, um, the product of X, Y, and Z is one in absolute value for, for signature PPP. So PPP, here P is varying. Uh, you get that the product of X and Y in absolute value is one for signatures PPR and for signatures RRP, you get that D is one in absolute value. So this leads to the definition of what I'm calling the trivial solutions. So trivial solutions will be those solutions in, in core prime integers that satisfy these conditions here, together with the solutions for which the products X, Y, and Z is zero. And again, as I said before, we, we'll see later that this trivial solution are actually a, a highly non-trivial obstruction to solving certain uh, generalized Fermat equation. But for, for now, we, we will focus on, on a simple case, let's say, the, the case of Fermat's last theorem. Of course, it's, it's a very deep theorem, which I recall now, you probably all know it, but uh, which has a very long history. And I will try to, to summarize in the, the, the main steps in its proof uh, in, in this part of the talk. So here's the statement of Fermat's last theorem. Uh, it says that for every, integers n, in, every integer n, which is greater than or equal to three, there is no non-trivial primitive solution to the equation. So here the non-trivial solution just means that the product x, y, and z is non-zero. These are the only non-trivial, these are the only trivial solutions for that equation. So how does, how does the, the proof work? So the proof is by contradiction. You first assume the existence of a non-trivial primitive solution ABC for some n greater than or equal to three. Of course, by, by the work of Euler and Fermat, you can also assume that, that n is greater than or equal to five, and you can even assume that n is, is, is prime. So I will, I will denote the exponent by P now, just to, to remember that it's a prime. It's a prime. So, so, so ABC are non-zero integers, co-prime, 
and they satisfy that a to the p plus b to the p is c to the p, and p is a prime greater than equal to five. So now, because of, because of the, the the shape of the equation, just by permuting a, b, and c if, if necessary, you, you can assume that you're in, in this situation. You can assume that a to the p is congruent to minus one mod four, and you can also assume that b is even. And since p is greater than or equal to five, in particular, you get that b to the p has to be divisible by 16, right? So that's only by, by the shape of the equation. So you, you, can, you can rename the variables if you want, or the, the, the solutions, and, and, and you get the, that these conditions, we can assume these without loss of generality, right? And now we proceed in, in, in five steps. And the whole argument that I will describe is what we know, what we call now the modular method, because it involves modular forms as we, as we, as we will see. So here's the first step. The first step is to attach to such, an, to such a non-trivial primitive solution to the Fermat equation. We, we're going to attach an elliptic curve defined by Q. And so here's the equation of the curve. So it's, it's defined by the equation y squared equal x times x minus a to the p times x plus b to the p. So you can compute the standard coefficient of this model. So the, what I call standard coefficients, the C4 coefficient turns out to be given by this expression, 16 times A to the 2P plus a, a B to the P plus B to the 2P. You can also compute the discriminant of the curve, which I, I call Delta. So with respect to this model two. And finally, the Jane variance, which is nothing but the the cube of the C4 coefficient divided by the discriminant. So what is important to notice here is that since the solution is non-trivial, it, it, it gives rise to, to, uh, to, uh, to an elliptic curve. Delta is non-zero, right? And, if, and we could have, we could have, said, uh, we could have uh, considered the, the same equation for, for ABC, a, a, a trivial solution, but then we would get a singular equation here, not an elliptic curve. That's, that's very important to notice. Okay. So now we, we can look at the, the, the reduction of this curve. And it turns out that it's easy to find that equation two defines a minimal model for that curve away from two. And because of the, oh, so, it, so in particular, uh, if you look at the, 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 the T4 coefficient and the delta coefficient, you will see easily that the curve E E sub ABC uh, as bad reduction at the not prime L if and only if L divides ABC. So that's, that's coming from the fact that, that <laughs> is, is, this model is, is uh, minimal away from two. And under the assumption that I made that in the previous slide, the, the two adic assumptions, uh, this curve also has bad multiplicative reduction at two. Okay. So just to summarize, what, what is, what's the situation? So we have an elliptic curve of a Q, which is semi-stable. Semi-stable means that uh, you have at every prime, you either have good reduction or bad multiplicative reduction. There's no additive reduction. And you, you precisely have bad multiplicative reduction at the prime dividing ABC. And moreover, if you, if you look at the, the Jane variant now, if you, if you pick a prime L, which divides ABC, then, and you look at the valuation of the Jane variant, it's, it's given by this formula here. And what's important to notice is that if L is odd, then it turns out that the, the valuation of the Jane variant is divisible by P. And when L is two, it's not divisible by P. That's all we, we have to, to keep in mind. So that's, that's the first step. And that's a step which is due to Fry and El Guash. So it's to attach an LP curve with certain properties uh, to, to, the, to, uh, to a non-trivial primitive solution of the Fermat equation. So now let's forget for a while, let's forget about the Diophantine problem we have and consider an elliptic curve E over Q and call, it, call its conductor N. So for, for a semi-stable elliptic curve, the conductor is nothing but the, the radical of the minimal discriminant. So, if you have such an elliptic curve, you can consider the, the p torsion points of, of E. 
And of course, the, the, the absolute Galois group of Q, of Q is, is acting on, on the set of p-torsion points, just component by component, component wise. And this gives you a, a group homomorphism from the, the absolute Galois group of Q into the group of automorphism of the p-torsion. But the p-torsion is, is, is just a, a z over p z z uh, vector space of dimension two. So after choosing a basis, you, you get a homomorphism from the absolute Galois group of Q into uh, GL2 of FP, the group of two by two matrices, invertible two by two matrices with coefficient in FP. So we shall say that this representation is unramified at prime L if when you take the image of some inertia group at L in, in the absolute regular group of Q, and, and this image is trivial. So more concretely, you can imagine, so this looks like a representation of, it, of an infinite group, right? Because the, the absolute group of Q is of course infinite. But the image is finite. So you can factor it through a finite Gallo group of, so the fin, a finite open subgroup group of, of, of the absolute Gallo group of Q. So you can think of this representation as a representation from a certain Gallo group of a finite extension of Q into GL2 of FP. And saying that this representation is unramified at prime p just, just means that this prime L isn't ramified in that finite Galois extension. Okay. And in the other situation, we say it's, it's unramified. Oh, sorry, we say it's ramified. Yeah. So unramified means that the image of inertia group is, is trivial. So now, as a consequence of the criterion of Neron, Og, and Shafarevich, it's easy to, so we, we have that the representation attached to, the mod P representation attached to some elliptic curve E is unramified away from P and the conductor of N. So the, away from P and the bad primes for, for E. And so now using the, the theory of takers, uh, we, can, we can be more precise on, on these results. And here's the, the proposition. So, so recall that I, I will denote by J the J invariant of E and consider a prime L, which is not, not the prime P and assume that L divides exactly once the conductor. So I, I, I'm assuming that L is a prime of bad multiplicative reduction, right? That's, that's equivalent. Then the, 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 theory, the theory of take curves tells us that the representation, the mod P representation attached to E is unramified at L, if and only if the gene variant of the, the valuation at L of the gene variant of E is congruent to zero mod P. Okay. So we so therefore we, we can apply this proposition to, to our uh, to our Fry curve, right? To our curve A sub A B C, which is the, the, the elliptic curve attached to our non-trivial primitive solutions to the Fermat equation. And because of the properties that I, I, I summarize at the end of step one about this curve, it turns out that the mod P representation attached to E sub ABC, our Fry curve, is ramified away from two and P. Remember that it, it depends, the, the, this elliptic curve depends on the solution, right? But the mod P representation has, is ramified away from two and P. So the, 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 the primes, the primes that, that divides ABC do not show up in the ramification set. And now we, we, we come to one of the main steps, first main steps of, of the, the modular method where we have to, in, to invoke some deep result by Maser. So let me just recall that, that result. So again, E over Q is an elliptic curve and Maser classified all the possible torsion subgroups of the, Q, the set of Q rational points on E. And they, they're given by this list, fine list of groups. So it's either Z over ND for some integer N between one and 10 or N equal 12, or it's a copy of Z over two Z, Z plus Z over two and Z for N being, being one and four. So now remember that, remember the, the shape of our Fry curve here. The, our Fry curve has the special property that it, ha it has a two, Two rational, in, it has full two torsion of a Q. All of its two torsion points are defined of a Q, right? So applying applying Mazur's result to that equation gives the following the, the following theorem, which is 
which is very important for the rest of the talk. So the actually the the mod p representation attached to our fry curve turns out to be absolutely reducible. And that's going to be an assumption for for one of the next theorem. Okay, that's that's the second step. So that's the irreducibility step. So now we we turn to the modularity step, which is the third step in 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 the proof of Fermat's theorem. So uh, and then I have to recall what the the, the work of Wise and and Taylor Wise. So here's the setting. So we have uh, we have an elliptic curve E of a Q. And let, let's assume it's semi-stable because, because that's the situation for at least for the for the case of Fermat theorem, we, we have a semi-stable elliptic curve. And, and denote by n its conductor. And again, for a semi-stable elliptic curve, the conductor is, is just the, the, the radical of the minimal discriminant. So you can consider these this product here, these Euler products. So you, you, that's the product that defines the L function. So a, what, what's AP of E? At, so AP of E if for, for good P, so the, for the primes of good reductions, AP of E is given by the, form, the following formula. It's P plus one minus the cardinality of the set of P torsion, the, the set of FP rational points on the reduction mod P. Okay, and there is a similar definition for, for primes of bad multiplicative reductions. And it turns out that AP in that case is either one or minus one, depending on whether the reduction is split or non-split. Anyway, so it's it's an integer. And you can consider these Euler products, where here's the characteristic function of, of uh, n. Say so, so one n of p is just zero if p divides n and one if P does not divide N. Okay. So you expand it as a, as a, as a, as a power series in, in, in one over. So as a sum of, of all integers N greater than equal to one with coefficient N, a N of E divided by N to the S. And that's what we call the L function of, of, of E. And you can, you can therefore consider the following, the following function here, F sub E, which is the sum of all integers n of this coefficient a n of e, which I defined just above, times q to the n. So here in this notation, which is which is a, a, the common notation when we are working with new forms or modular forms. So here I mean, so here that that's a function on the upper on the complex upper half plane. So if d is, is is a complex number with was imaginary part is greater than zero, q denotes e to the two i p z. So that's the, the standard notation in the theory. So these, these functions, which is a, a function on, on the uh, complex of our plane, turns out to be a way to new form of level n and trivial number types. If, if you don't know about modular forms, all you have to know is that modular forms are some, some holomorphic functions on the upper half plane that behaves following some rules under the action of, of SL2Z. So there is an, an, an action of SL2Z by linear fractions on, on, a, on the upper half plane. And these functions, they are holomorphic and they, they behave in, in, in certain way under the action. And associated to any modular form is a weight. Here, here the weight turns out to be two and there is a level. And the level turns out to correspond to the, corresponds to the conductor of, of the curve. Okay, so what Wiles theorem is telling us is that given a semi-stable elliptic curve, we can attach to it a certain analytic function, a modular form. Okay, so, but now when, when we have modular forms, there are, there, are, there are things we can do, and I will recall these kind of things we can do. So take a modular form here. So again, forget about the, the diaphragm problem we have in mind just for a while. And suppose that it's a way to new form of level n, trivial level types, forget about this detail. And to, to such an analytic object, we can actually attach a Galois, a Galois representation as I did before for elliptic curves. So, and this Galois representation, I will denote it by rho fp. So for every point p, you have a Galois, Galois representation. 
And it turns out that these, this gallery of representation is uniquely uh, characterized up to semi-simplification and isomorphism by, by, by the following property. First of all, it's, it's unramified away from the prime P and the level N of the form. And for every prime L, which doesn't divide N and P, you can look at the image of the Frobenius at L and its characteristic polynomial is given by the reduction of this, of this polynomial here, the degree two polynomial, X squared minus AL of X plus L. And AL, of AL is the L's coefficient here in the Q expansion of F. So that construction is due to Aishla and Shimura. It was later generalized at the end of the, at, at the, the end of the 60s by, by, by Delin to any, any, any weight, arbitrary weight, anyway. So we, we should say that the Galois representation rho, so if, if, you, if you take a Galois representation from, from the absolute Galois group of Q with values into GL2 of FP bar, we should say that it's, it's a modular representation if it arises from, from some modular form as I explained before. So if there existed a way to new form F of level N with the property that the representation rho is isomorphic to rho FP. And in that case, we, should, we said that rho arises from F. So now we can, ref, I mean, as, uh, we can rephrase, or not really rephrase, but we can use the wide theorem Wild theorem is attaching is attaching a, a, a new form to our uh, Fry curve, and since to both Fry to both Fry to the Fry curve we have a Galois representation, and, and to the the new form we also have a Galois representation. We it turns out that the Galois representation attached to the to the elliptic curve, the mod p representation, arises arises from from a new form. So it's modular for level n, which is given by these. And which is nothing but the, the 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 radical of the of the minimal discriminant of of the the Fry curve, right? So what you you should notice here is that this level here depends on the solution because it's the the product of all prime dividing ABC. It's the radical of ABC, so it, it depends on the solution. Now we're gonna get rid of this dependence. And for that, we, we will use what, what is called the uh, rebets level of uh, lowering the level result. So here's the statement. So you start from, from any uh, Galois representation row, which is irreducible, and you assume that it's modular of some level, M. And you pick a prime L that divides exactly once the level. So this, this means divides exactly once. So what, what, what Ribet's theorem is telling us is that if rho is finite at L, then rho is modular of level N over L. And what it means to be finite at L in, in for the case of, well, for, for the case, so for the case, we, we're going, we are going to apply this result to, to the mod P representation attached to our Fry curve, right? And what does it mean in, in that situation that rho is, this representation is finite at L? Oops. Finite at L means just that the, the valuation at L of the J invariant is congruent to zero mod P. That's, that's how the finite at L just means that. And we've seen, we've seen that it always holds at least for the, for the odd primes, not for two, but for, for, for L being odd, that, that's always finite. And the fact that this representation, this mod P representation is, is irreducible because it's an assumption in Rebet's result that we have to have, we need to have a, a, an irreducible representation comes from Maser. So irreducibility comes from Maser. So, so we, 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 we are in the right assumptions to apply Rebet's CRM and we can apply it recursively to, to get rid of the dependence on, 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 on the solution. And what we get at the end, is that the representation attached, the mod P representation attached to our Fry curve, which again, which again depends on, uh, on the solution and, and has, a, uh, I mean, has um, 
is modular of, of, of some level that depends on solution is actually so also modular of some lower level that doesn't depend on the solution. And actually the lower level we get is just two because all the primes here, we get rid of them using Rivet theorem except for L equals two. It, we're just left with, with L equals two. And now we are we are almost there because because we know that we know that the mod pure rotation attached to the fry curve has to come from a, a way too new form of level two, but it's easy to it's easy to prove that there's no there is no new form of weight two and level two, and therefore Fermat theorem is proved. So that that's the way it works. So we have these five steps, and and we have to go through all the steps to 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 show Fermat theorem. So now, if, if we want to extend this, we are facing actually deep problems basically at each of the steps. So I, I will just explain a few. Yes, there is a question. Uh, I'll just have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like in the while the Galois representation, there's a modular of level n. So is that n square free? N square free, yes. Uh, that's because of the semi stable, right? That's because the the fry curve is semi stable. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. So I, I'm going to list some some of the the problems we can actually we are facing when we want to generalize the modular method and, and look at at more at, at other just Fermat type equations, generalized Fermat equations. So I'm going back to the the case where uh, we have coefficients a, b, and c. But I'm keeping the, the signatures to be PPP, okay? So that's may probably the, the, the most natural equation you want to uh, generalize after Fermat's equation. So you, you want to deal with after Fermat equation. So now we, we fix A, B, C coefficients, and we look at this equation, A, A times X to the P plus B times Y to the P equals C times D to the P. So of course, they are, they are good points because first of all, uh, you can attach to to such a to, to you pick a, you pick a solution non-trivial primitive solution to that equation, and you can attach a, a, a fry curve as I did before. It's actually the same equation, but uh, it's actually the same equation, but you, you put just coefficients in front of, of of this a to the p and b to the p. Now it's no longer semi-stable in general, but it doesn't really matter because after White's work and, and on the semi-stable case, the some people, Bray and Conrad and Diamond and Taylor, they have extended the this work to show that every elliptic curve of a Q is modular. So we can we can assumption that that the, the curve is semi-stable and it, it applies to that more generalized curve, more generalized curve. And uh, also we, we can also apply major state major result about the to prove that these the representation attached to that curve the mod pure representation is again irreducible at least for for large enough prime p which and 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 the bound might depend on the coefficient a b and c so if you're interested in small coefficients that might be a, a, a problem but if you're interested in solving the equation for all but finitely many coefficients for instance or for large enough exponents p it's it's not a problem. So you, you can you can apply it measures result. So you get that it's irreducible. And again, using using uh, arithmetic properties of this fry curve, with which is slightly just slightly more general than than the, those that I have listed for the the, the original fry curve. Uh, you see that you can apply um, Rivet's result, and so you can you can just lower the level. And so what you get at the end of the day is that. There exists a certain modular from F, that one here. There is a certain modular from F of way two and some level M, which is explicit and doesn't depend on the solution anymore. So it, it might happen that we will see, we'll see an example in a few minutes. Might happen that M belongs to a finite list of, 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 of integers, but these finite list, I mean, it's a finite list and explicit. So you have a, a finite collection of, of new forms that can show up at the end. And with the property that the mod p representation attached to your fry curve here is isomorphic to the mod p representation attached to, to F. 
And these can be rephrased in terms of, yeah, of congruencies between the coefficients of, on, on one side, the coefficient of these, uh, these modular form F, and on the other side, the, the coefficient of, of E, say. Okay, so th this is a, a very explicit way to rephrase this isomorphism here. So we have these congruencies, and, and all we have to do is to, to contradict these, con these congruencies. Remember so, that in the case of, yes? Oh, so, so in this slide, you are talking about uh, this isomorphism of the Galva representation. So one side we have conductor N for E, but the other side we have conductor M for F? Yes. Is that M, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So yeah, and, and remember that in the case of Fermat's last equation, last year, there was no nothing to discuss actually because there was no, no new form. The space was just trivial. But when you apply the, 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 the modular method to the, these more general equation, Fermat curves with coefficients, you might end up at, at, at some level where you, are, you have forms. So, and, and what does it mean to discard the forms? Or to discard the specific form, it means to, to be able to contradict these congruences. But there are issues okay. actually. There are issues. Excuse me, Nicholas, <laughs> I just have one more question. Yes, please. So in the previous slide, you said the Ribet's result can be applied. But previously, because L divides exactly the N, you are able to lower the level if it is finite. But in this context, N may not be square free if you want to apply. So is there a generalized version of Ribet's result? No, what, 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 what's happening actually that um, whenever you have a prime that divides the, 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 the that divides A, B, and C, mm -hmm. or A, B, or C, okay. it, it turns out to be a, or either it belongs to a, a finite list of primes, mm -hmm. which, which might, like, like for instance, it might be a divisor of one of the coefficients, mm -hmm. or it's a prime of bad multiplicative reduction and the exponent in the minimal discriminant, the, the exponent of the, the exponent of the prime is, is divisible by p. So, so you can get rid of the dependence of the solution, mostly, let's say. It might happen that at the end, you, you, you get a few choices for, for, the, for the, the smaller level, but, but you'll get a finite list of levels. Okay, so it's uh, not as clear as before, but uh... It's almost uh, okay. You'll see an example in a few minutes. Maybe it will be more clear on, on the example. Okay. And just one more question here. M divides N, right? Sorry, say no. again? No. Is it the case that M divides N, the level of the modular form divides the conductor? Uh, the, level of the, uh, the level of the modular forms always divides the level of the, the, the Fry curve. Yes. Is it huh, your question? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, M. Okay. Here the M here is always a divisor of M. Yeah, yeah because other the second condition makes more sense uh, because if M divides yes. N, so it can yeah. be nice. Okay, yeah, thank you. You're so, so Ribbit's so, level lowering result does not require M to be square free. It, it, it can be used for any N, is that right? Uh, I'm not saying that N is square free. Because because the the, the Fry curve might not be semi-stable, but I'm what I'm saying is that all the primes that that depend on the solution that appear in, in N, either they belong to a finite list of prime or or they, they they are primes of bad multiplicative reduction with exponent divisible by p. So you after level lowering you, you get rid of them. Yeah. Okay. So let, 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 let's look at this specific example where capital A is one, capital B is, is one, and, and capital C is two, right? So that's, that's a, an equation that has been considered by, by many people, but no, so by Ribet and, and later by Damon and Merrill. So here we, we, can, we can apply the same, the, the techniques that I've been summarizing before, and we get this elliptic curve, which has this discriminant here. So that's only the, to, we think the coefficient to be one, one, two, right? So, and, and if you apply everything, here's what you get. What you get is that the N, so you see N is not necessarily uh, uh, square free because you have, in that situation when ABC is odd, you get two to the five. But what I'm saying is that the primes that depend on the solution here, they, 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 
they appear with exponent only one in the conductor, right? There is, at least, there is at least one prime of bad multiplicative reduction that comes from the, the assumption that ABC uh, is, is a non-trivial solution. And so we get that the mod pure notation is absolutely reducible. That, that's using, using Mazur's result. And after, so after level lowering, when we apply Ribet theorem, we get that the, these, con, these elliptic curve, this mod pure notation, sorry, has conductor M, which is either two or 32, depending on whether ABC is even or odd. So this is what I mean when, when I say that the level of that representation is almost independent on the solution. That means that it belongs to a finite list of, of possibilities of integers. So in, in that specific case, it's either two or 32. So now we, we, we are facing this, the problem of, of contradicting the congruencies that I, I've seen, you've seen before. So if M is two, we get a contradiction immediately as in from Atlas theorem, because there's no new form of weight two and level two. That's the same, exactly the same conclusion as before. But if M is 32, then there is actually a form of weight two, new form of weight two and level 32. And, and it turns out that this space is actually one dimensional and spined by, by a unique new form that turns out to correspond to the mod, so it's mod peer representation corresponds to the mod peer representation of that specific elliptic curve, which I call F with equation y squared equal x cubed minus x. So now we, we, are, we are facing the problem of contradicting the, these isomorphism between two elliptic curves, the mod peer representation attached to our Fry curve rho, rho EP and the mod peer representation attached to that specific elliptic curve F. And you can notice here that F is actually precisely the, the, the Fry curve that corresponds to uh, that specific solution. So F is nothing but E of one, one, two, and one, one, one. So that trivial solution here turns out to be the non-trivial problem, okay? So we, we, we want to contradict that isomorphism. So there's always a conjectural answer to that, but it's again, very, very open, widely open. So the, here's the conjecture by Fry and Mazur. Fry and Mazur is saying that, so that conjecture is saying that whenever you have two elliptic curves of a Q, which have isomorphic mod pure representation, as long as P is large enough, uniformly independently of, of the curve, then it should imply that both E and F are isogenous, uh, that E and F should be isogenous of a Q. So in particular, they should have the same conductor. But if you apply these to E being the Fry curve and F being the, the curve that comes from after level lowering, then you get that the N and the M, so the level of the Fry curve and the level of the, the, the elliptic curve F should be the same. So, and this is a contradiction because ABC is, is a non-trivial solution. So, so we, have, we have a conjectural answer to that question. So here the constant C, capital C, does it depend on something? No, it depends on nothing. It's supposed to be, I mean, some people conjecture it's 19. Okay. So, so that's, that's a conjectural answer, but actually we, we can give an, a non-conditional answer, but, and it uses the fact that F is actually a, a, a complex, a, a, an elliptic curve with complex multiplication, and the fact that the Fry curve has, has a rational two torsion point. So, so let, me, let me just summarize briefly the, the argument, which is due to Diamond and Morel. So you have to distinguish within, between the case where P is congruent to one with four and the case where P is congruent to minus one with four. So assume that you have this isomorphism between the mod pure rotation attached to the Fry curve and the mod pure rotation attached to the curve F, which, which has complex multiplication. That's gonna be important. So th then, because we know, we know exactly the, the image of the mod pure rotation attached to uh, curves with complex multiplication. These isomorphism gives us that E gives rise to a rational point on the modular curve X bit P, which means that it has image in the, in the normalizer of, an, of a split captain subgroup. And by a result of Momose, uh, this implies that at least for P greater than or equal to 17, this implies that E, the, the Fry curve has potentially good reduction at all primes. So in particular, the Jane variant should be integral. And so, so you, get, you get the contradiction with the fact that ABC is, is a non-trivial solution. And, and let me just point out here, just a small remark that now 
we can use more recent results to deal with all the to to to, to for this argument because uh, so we can use work of Bilou Parent, Reboyedo, or Balakrishnan, Dogra, Muller, Tutman, and, and Wonk. So to, to somehow simplify this, this part of the argument. Anyway. When is this legal? When is this legal? Uh, they, they're saying that. Uh, the time saying of this that result. There's, no, there's no rational point on these modular curves. There, there are no rational, non CM rational points on these rational, uh, modular curves. So the, this is related to the. To the determination of Q rational points to be on this modular curve, but all we need in in in, in for this argument is an integrality resolved by Momose. That's that's enough, of course. So you can forget about the remark. Do we know that the J invariant of the Fry curve is not an integer in this case? Yes, we know that because because of our assumption that 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 A B C is non-trivial solution. So okay. it, because ABC is a non-trivial solution, we know that there is at least one odd prime of bad multiplicative reduction. Ah, yes, yeah, that, okay. that implies that implies the J invariant is not is not integral. Yeah, okay. So in the other situation where P is congruent to minus one mod four, then actually Damon and Morel they prove that uh, the image of the mod pure representation attached to E turns out to be the actually the, the image of, a, of a decomposition group at P of the mod pure representation attached to, to F. So in particular, in particular, the, these mod P representation attached to the Fry curve, it has image in the normalizer of a non-split Cartan subgroup. And therefore the, the prime P does not divide ABC. And again, it, it's, a, it's a contradiction with, with this integrality result of, so that's the analog of Mamose's result but for the other case, for the other congruence class, for, for the case where P is congruent to minus one mod four, they, they prove that the J invariant of E belongs to Z bracket one over P. And again, it's in contradiction with the fact that ABC is a non-trivial solution because we, we, we should have a prime of bad multiplicative reduction. Okay. So I'm probably skipping some details here, but. At the end, what we get is the following theorem, which is which is a, due to Ribet and Damon Morel, that says that for every n greater than equal to three, the Fermat equation x to the n plus y to the n equals two times z to the n has no non-trivial primitive solution. So all the solutions are the trivial solutions, those for which one of these x, y, and z is zero, or the solution one, one, one <laughs> to sign. And just to, to be precise, since I've been assuming that that the exponent was prime and greater than 17, for instance, just to, to, be, to, to, be, to be complete, I would like to point out that the, the small cases, the, the case where the exponent is between two and 31 was already known before, thanks to the work of Dines. Okay. So that, that's one, one issue we are facing when we, we, we want to apply the Mandela method is we have problem with the trivial solutions. And especially with the, of course, we, the problem comes when the trivial solutions give rise to elliptic curve, to non singular curves. One of uh, another issue that we have is that we, we might we we, we might miss some some fry curves. I mean, there is there's, there's a lack of fry curve, let's say, because we can attach fry curves to some generalized Fermat equation, but definitely not to any Fermat equation. It, it's always a, a, another job to do it. So, and that, that this, this work has been done for certain signatures, but not all of them. So in particular, this has been done for signatures PP2 and PP3 and signature RRP, where again, R is fixed. And in particular, when R is three, five, and seven, we have, we have Frikers defined over Q. But you see, it's not all the, all the signatures that for which we have Frikers defined over Q. So in particular, if you if you consider the, the these equation x cubed plus y cubed equals d to the p, so signature three three p, uh, we have a Fry curve, and these Fry curves read as follows. So that that the, the elliptic curve given by this equation y squared b equal x cubed plus three a b x plus b cubed minus a cubed. So and again, you, you you can you can wonder can we apply the modular technique, and to show that. This equation has no solution apart from the trivial solution, for instance. And here you face another problem, which comes from none the trivial solution, but what we call the almost solution. So, so let me just summarize the situation. 
So you have trivial solutions. But trivial solutions, look at the, the, the shape of the discriminant. The discriminant is a to the three plus b to the three. There is no a, b, or a times b in front of that. So whenever c is different from zero, it gives rise to, to, to a non singular curve, so to, to an elliptic curve, right? So if you have a trivial solution with c different from zero, like, like, like the solution one, zero, one, it gives rise to, a, to an elliptic curve. And that's, that's a real obstruction, right? But fortunately, these, these elliptic curves, they're actually CM. And since the curve E, which is here, has also a rational point of the two, you can check that the point with coordinate B minus A comma zero is, is a rational point of the two. So fortunately, because of these curves that arise from trivial solution as CM, FCM, and the curve E has a rational two torsion point, then we can apply the, the techniques of Tamo and Norel and conclude in that case. But unfortunately, there is another issue that, that arises from, from the, 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 the existence of almost solution. And this is what I'm going to discuss here. So look, you have this, you have this identity here, two to the cube plus one to the cube is plus or minus three to the squared, right? And of course, you might think that, okay, it's not the solution to our problem because we are considering here exponent greater than or equal to, to, to three or four or five or whatever, large coefficient, large exponents, but still it exists, right? And because it exists, it gives rise to an elliptic curve, which has exactly the same shape as the, the curve that is attached to a non-trivial solution. And it turns out that it arises at, at the minimal level that you get after level lowering. So, so when you apply the modular technique, I'm, I'm skipping all the details here, but trust me that you, you can do it. And at the end of the day, you, you, will, you will arrive to this isomorphism where on the right and on the left hand side, you have the mod permutation attached to uh, non-trivial solution, AB, ABC. And on the right hand side, you have this specific, you have this specific uh, representation here, which corresponds to an almost solution. But here you're stuck because this curve doesn't have CM. So you cannot apply the, the techniques that, that I discussed before. And actually you cannot conclude. So you have to find other techniques. And, and so I, I won't discuss all the, all the clever techniques that people have been creating to, to, to deal with this equation. But let me just summarize the work of Euler, Daumann, Granville, Cross, Bruin, Chen, Tixek, and Freitas in that theorem. So they all contributed to this in, in different ways. But you see, it's not completely solved. So we, we know that this equation has no non-trivial primitive solution for from exponent p equal to equal to three, belonging to a set of primes of den the density about 0 0.8. So in particular, all these primes for all these exponents, we have no solution, no, no non-trivial solution. But the problem of solving that equation in full generality is still open. And finally, if you if you want to generalize again and, and consider instead of signature R, 3, 3p, but signature RRP for, for larger R, you are facing another problem. So for R equals 3, 5, and 7, we have a elliptic curve defined over Q. But for, for other values of R, we don't have such uh, elliptic curves over Q. But still, there are good news, because uh, in 2015, Freitas proved that he made, he made explicit construction, and he proved that uh, we have elliptic curves, five elliptic curves attached to these equations. But they turn out to be defined not over Q, but over totally real subfield. So that, that's another challenge when you, you want to apply all these techniques that I discussed before, not to elliptic curves over Q, but to elliptic curves over number fields. And that's, that's completely, I mean, that, that, that's another problem because all these results, the result by Y, the result by Maser, the result by Rebet, they're really dependent on the base field. So when you go and you base change from Q to another number field, Basically everything breaks down, so you, you have to you have to do all the work again. So that's that's good news, but it's a great challenge as well. And, and let me just mention that for that specific case where signature seven seven p, it's it's a very nice situation because here we have three three uh, fry objects that are attached to that equation. First of all, we have a fry curve of the Q. I said before, so here's the explicit equation. So it's not it's not 
quite easy to check that it has the right properties, but but trust me that that that's the right equation of a Q to consider. Because of the work of Freitas, we know that there is also an, a, a Fry curve, but over a totally real cubic field, so which turns out to be the, the maximal totally real subfield of Q of data seven, the, the seventh ad, the seventh uh, cyclotomic field. And there is also an hyper curve defined over Q, where the equation is given here. It has been constructed by Krauss in, in, your, in, in the 90s. And so combining all these information coming from all these curves and hyperelliptic curves, so elliptic curves and hyperelliptic curves, you can hope to show some, some result about this, this equation. And that, that's a very rich situation. And, and the result you can get will be discussed in, in some of the next lectures. So I will let uh, Nuno Freitas and Imin Chen probably talk about that. Thank you for your attention. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you. Um, is there any question for Nicola? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Go ahead. So the first thing is about this frame uh, frame measures conjecture. When P bigger than C, the mod P representation isomorphic implies the elliptic curves are isogenous. The, so I just want to measure conjecture. Yes. 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 So, what is the state of art about this conjecture? Like, what is known? What is what? Sorry. No, no. Uh, at proven, what is the best result uh, towards this conjecture? Oh, I think no, nothing is known. I think uh, it, it's it's completely open. Even if even if you fix the the one curve, you, you fix the elliptic curve E, and you you just you, you would like to show that there is only uh, that for, for large enough prime. For large enough prime, uh, if you have an elliptic curve f, which is either which has the same mod p Galois module, so the, let's say the, the mod p rotation are, are isomorphic, you get that they are isogenous. No, there's nothing known. Nothing known. It's completely open. No, even if but one of the curve is CM. Uh, even if the curve is no, no, nothing. Yeah. Okay. But I think what the small value is of p. Need, I mean, they, but, uh, on the other end, if you if you if you consider this problem, so for smaller primes, like for p equals three, five, seven, eleven, and so on, you can you can look for you, you you can wonder what what are the pairs of elliptic curves which are non isogenous but for which the mod p rotation are isomorphic, and people have been trying to find examples and then to to find infinite families of such examples. So there are recent work, for instance, by Tom Fisher. Tom Fisher has been doing recent work on these questions. But pro proving frame and major conjectures is probably very hard. It, it's also a consequence of the ABC conjecture. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's equivalent to it, but, but it's probably maybe not as hard, but it, it's definitely very hard. I don't think it's, uh, uh, I think it's hopeless to, to attack the Fenton equations, of, even the from a type using that, that conjecture. But on the other hand, um, Faltings' is isogeny theorem, it, does that say that if the piadic representations are isomorphic, then the curves are isogenous? Uh, sure, sure, yes. For the right. piadic representation, it, it, it's true, it's Falting theorem, yeah. Yeah. It's due to Falting so. No, I'm really talking about the, uh, I'm really the talking P, about yeah. the mod P representation, mod P yeah. representation. I've noticed that later, later I, I use the bar. Yeah, here I use the bar. Before I, I didn't use bars, but it, it's it, mm -hmm. everywhere. All the Galois representation I've been talking about are mod pure representation. I see. Okay, and the second question uh, you had uh, classified the situation p is congruent one mod four and p is congruent to minus one mod four. Yes. To, uh, I mean, I just wanted to know where that play a role. I mean, I know at uh, Darmon, uh, Merrill, they use P corn and minus one of four, but just, I just wanted to know where do you exactly distinguish this case? Well, that's because because of the, uh, the the description of the image of the mod P rotation attached to that specific curve F. So F is, is, is an elliptic curve of a Q, quite mm -hmm. explicit. The, 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 curve, the curve is given here. So it, it has CM by... Qi, Q square root of minus one. Ah, uh, okay. And and so the the 
the, the description of the image depends on whether P, the, the description of the mod P representation, the image of the mod P representation depends on whether P is, is split on a uh, non-split in, 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 in QI. So that's oh, why wait, you have to distinguish P from one to one and minus one to four, yes. Okay, I understand. And uh, maybe one last question. Uh, yeah. Towards the end, you said that we have this free hyper elliptic curves. Instead of yes. elliptic curves, we can construct uh, free hyper elliptic curves. So, like in what kind of signatures uh, one constructs this? And uh, I mean, previously, you know that by modularity, it belongs to S2 level 2 or another thing. And you said that there are no such modular forms. But when oh, it comes that, to that, hyper elliptic curves, like how do you use this to show the yes. non existence? That's that's that will be the, the topic of the next two, two talks on Darman's program by, by Nuno Freitas and Imin Chen, but I can tell you a bit more about that. So, first of all, that's that's a construction which is due to cross. And he, he did it not only for the signature 77P, but he actually is able to attach to any non-trivial solution to of any uh, RRP equation. He's attaching some 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 curve CR of AB. Which is, which is a, an hyperelliptic curve. So, so here's the, here the explicit expression for, for i equals seven, but you have such, you have such equations for, for any r. And for i equals three, actually, you, you, you have an elliptic, it's an hyperelliptic yeah. curve, which turns out to be an elliptic curve, and, and, and this is the, the one that I have given before. So that, that's the first thing. Then the second thing is that, um, so Dam, Damond has developed a, a, a very general program to, to attack uh, generalized thermodynamic equation using using not not only Fry curves but Fry abelian varieties. So these Fry abelian varieties, they they are defined over function fields, and you specify them at some some specific point, and you, you get abelian varieties defined over Q, which are adapted to the study of thermodynamic equation of signature, let's say RRP. And it turns out that these these hyperelliptic curves constructed by cross, they can fit into the Damon's program. Mm -hmm. And you can show that indeed they, they are modular, but the definition is, is, is a bit more complicated. And, and first of all, so, the, so you can see that actually the Jacobian hyperelliptic curves that gives you abelian varieties defined over Q. And you have to base change them to, um, to some totally real subfield, to totally real number fields. And, over some totally real number field, they become what we call GL2 type. So we can attach two-dimensional Galois representation to them mm -hmm. and periodic representation. And what we sh showed together with uh, Imin Chen and Luis Delefe and, and Nuno Freitas is that um, these, these Galois representation, the, 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 course, but the system of Galois representation that you can attach to these GL2 type abelian variety, it corresponds to the, the compatible system of, of a Hilbert modular form of that defined over that uh, totally real field. So it's, it's another story, <laughs> I would say. Uh, I see. It, it's based on the idea that I've been talking about today. Uh, right. Uh, maybe uh, just one last question. You told us that the ABC conjecture implies uh, that there are only finitely many solutions for the generalized Fermat equation. Probably in yes. the first or second slide. So, yes. I mean, uh, if uh, like without using ABC conjecture, are there any partial results in this direction in the sense a broad, broad enough, like for signatures partial, of some partial type? Partial result in the direction of, of, of what of ABC? I mean, without uh, without using ABC conjecture, if you still want to prove this, I mean, maybe may not be in some generality like this, but uh, are there some situations? Uh, I mean, you had already stated uh, some situations like PP2, PP3, and RRP, etc. But uh, is there a general uh, statement and saying that when r is even r in some uh, any situations one, one can prove the same result i mean to show that there are only finitely many tuples of this form uh, i mean and uh, i i didn't hear correctly the, the question but, but <laughs> no I, no i meant without abc conjecture uh, like to what extent one can show this result that there are only finitely many primes Sorry, there are finitely many triplets of four prime integers satisfying this condition. So if you don't use ABC conjecture, so yes. in what like till what extent uh, one can prove this result is what my question is. Well, uh, I, I don't think you can prove anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ABC, yeah, 
you, you need something really strong to to get that statement. So ABC conjecture is 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 strong for sure, yes. but uh, I don't think you can prove any anything in that direction, like a, a finiteness result for varying. Re remember that that already for fixed for fixed signature to get that result here, you, you needed you needed finiting theorem, right? So here we are talking about varying signatures. So it's, 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 it's again, much more difficult. So I don't think we, you can prove anything unconditional. So maybe you can ask if there are any other conjecture which is maybe less general or less strong that- uh, uh, Okay, then maybe it's to the yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's always a good idea maybe, okay. when, when you have a, a diamond problem to see what ABC conjecture is telling you, telling you about that problem. <laughs> Right, and maybe one uh, or last question. So, uh, I mean, uh, instead of elliptics, typically when you look at uh, the generalized Fermat equation, you get Q curves, right? Uh, in sometimes, yes, you get Q curves, yes. So, will you be discussing anything about uh, Q curves? Uh, uh, Q curves, uh, um, uh, in, in the, in, for the case of equation I've been talking about today, I don't think they, they play any role because the curves I've, I've been talking about, they defined over Q, that they, they are just, just Q curve, but for trivial reasons. But you're right that some, some equations, you, you attach Q curves to them. And in that case, it makes, it makes the modular method more, more flexible in, in several ways. For, for, for instance, it was easier to prove the modularity, but now, now we, have, we have really deep results to prove modularity. But, before, I mean, at least the moderate step was easier for Q curves. And also for Q curves, instead of using the modular method of some number field, so when you attach not a classical form, but, but the Hilbert model form to the, to the mod pure representation, if you have Q curves, after twisting the, 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 the mod pure representation attached to Q curves, they will extend to GQ. So somehow you, 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 can, you can rely on, on the classical modular method when you attach a classical modular form to, to, to this representation and not in the Hilbert modular form. And it makes life much easier because you have, you compute in, in spaces of forms which are easier to compute. Okay, so the right, Q curve yeah. situation is also, uh, yeah. When you have a, a, a Fry curve, which is a Q curve, that's, that's a good, good situation in a sense. But it doesn't oh. happen all, all the time. It not happen. I see. Yeah, okay, I understand. Okay, yeah. Th thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Are there more questions for Nicola? Oh, so I had one question, Nicola. So uh, sure. when you are talking about this example, um, I'm a little bit confused about the, the step of Ribet's uh, level lowering uh, when the theorem is applicable. So do you just need to find one prime uh, one prime elf at the semi-stable reduction or multiplicative reduction is happening. Because in the example, it's not, the discriminant itself was not square free, right? But you mentioned that, you know, you can find a prime where it is multiplicative. So is it just about finding one single prime? I probably so missed In that example there. here, you mean for, for the case of, yeah. of Damon and Morel situation? Oh, in that case, in that case, if, if you take a prime L, which is, uh, which divide, I mean, uh, I, I, I didn't uh, see, okay, so, take so, a prime L. So I, I didn't write the, the C4 coefficients, so, but, but that curve, that curve is semi-stable away from two. So if okay. you take a prime L that divides A, B, C, which is a not prime, okay, now what you'll get is that, first of all, the, the, the reduction is multiplicative and the evaluation of the, that, that's going to be, that will be the minimal discriminant at L, not at two, but for, for prime L, which is not prime, that's going to be the, the minimal discriminant. And the valuation is dividable by P again. And so, so if you look at the conductor, L will, happen, will, will appear with valuation one in the conductor. And then after level lowering, you get rid of it because, because, the, because of this valuation being dividable by P. So it's, it's exactly the same situation as in, in in the case of Fermat's equation, except that you have, the, the situation is a bit more complicated at two. And that's why we have to distinguish between the case of ABC being even and ABC being odd. And so basically after level lowering, here you, you get two and here you get 
two to the five. So what I'm what I'm, I was asking about is that is this always a necessary condition for this level lowering that you have to have um, like multiplicative at all the other primes other than two? Is that a necessary condition for applying the uh, at, at least, at least for, for primes that that are prime of primes of bad multiplication? Uh, yeah, yes, it, it's a necessary and sufficient condition, I would say. Oh, okay. If you, if you look at Tate's results here, you see for, for a prime of bad multiplicative reduction, you get level, you, you have level lowering if and only if the, 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 the valuation is divisible by P. So maybe your question is, is for primes that are not of bad multiplicative reduction, but for primes that are of, of bad additive reduction. Yeah, yeah. So I was just thinking like, so this pro this this method would probably not work then if you have no. uh, uh, like I mean you, you cannot apply Tate's Tate's theory because Tate's theory is, is about multiplicative reduction and but I don't think you can get rid of these primes if they, they turn out to be prime of bad bad additive reduction. I see. Okay. Okay. That's that's but, that that was my question. All the examples when you when you look for a fry sorry for a fry curve you want the discriminant or the minimal discriminant to be let's say something which is uh, independent of the solution times d to the p uh, where all the dependence of the solution appears here and all the primes that that are here as as a multiplicative reduction that that's the situation you are looking for always i see so is there a way um, to deal with other other kind of uh, equation um, other kind of you know when, when this additive reduction case happens in those cases, is there a other kind of theory or other kind of result which you can use to solve? Mm, or like, is, is this the restriction we always have that we have to only deal with the primes with multiplicative? I, I mean, you, you're always looking for 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 equations of Frike with minimal discriminant of, with this shape because. I don't I think you can get rid of the the the, multi, the bad uh, the bad additive primes. So they, they will always remain, and as as long as you have one prime depending on the solution that remains the level, you can you, you can say anything. So you know, doesn't look. I see. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, are there more questions for Nicola? Um, if not, uh, I don't have anything on chat. So let's thank. The speaker again. Let's thank Nicola again. Thank you. Thanks, Manami, for sharing the talk also. Yes. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a great no talk, Nicola. Yeah. Thank, oh, thank you, you for it. Yeah. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Yeah.